Hi. <sighs> Y'all. I'm just having a day. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are y'all doing? It's so nice to be here with you all. What a day. What a time. What a, what a moment. <laughs> I hope all of you are, are doing well, or at least better than me. Um, cause you know, I, I don't think that's asking for too much, you know, for y'all to be doing better than me is not asking for too much. Y'all. Can I have some cock, please? <laughs> there you go. That finally played. I forgot to turn that on when, when you said hi in the, ch in the chat earlier, Dex. Um, I feel like that was a bit loud. Uh, anyway. Hi, my name is Ruby. I'm a variety clown on this platform. Hello. Hi. Settle, settle in. Enjoy. Um... First of all, this is clearly not the time I said I was going to be live today, so love that for me, uh, completely lying to everyone. Uh, no, <laughs> actually today has been an adventure, if I, if I do say so myself. So like firstly, I think I went to bed at like a decent time. I was meant to wake up around like 3, 3.30 p.m., which you know, was slightly better than the day before, so I wasn't gonna complain. Cut to like 1 p.m., and uh, Mama Ruby decides that it would be a great idea to clean the bathroom while I'm asleep. And for some of you, it's y'all probably thinking, Ruby, what's wrong with cleaning the bathroom, you pig? Uh, <laughs> like, what's wrong? Like, let Mama Ruby clean the bathroom, you pig. Um, you see, the problem is um, cleaning is one, pretty noisy, and also I do share a wall with my bathroom, so essentially my head was directly in the danger zone as far as sound goes, uh, because everything that was being cleaned, all the things that were being dropped, all of the things that were happening, all the commotion in there, um, I could hear it all very, very, very clearly. And so by this point it was like 1 p.m., which is not like terrible, but for me it's like, I don't know what it is. Call it high maintenance, call it any issue that might be undiagnosed, but sleeping less than, than like, at least eight hours to me, I just wake up and I'm like destroyed. So naturally, I was like, okay, let me just try to stay in bed. Let me try to ignore it. It was so loud. And like my non-confrontational ass, instead of getting up and being like, hey, do you mind like, you know, either being more careful or like, you know, not cleaning the bathroom right now. Like I'm trying to sleep. But I was so angry that I was like, okay, I don't want to like, you know, explode right now, cause you know, whatever. So I just put on my, my noise canceling headphones and I just like, cause like with the headphones, you can't really turn to the sides and I can't really fall asleep like on my back. So I was just like this and like slightly to the side and like trying to fall asleep, but I couldn't, but I was kind of in that weird in-between area between being awake and being asleep, which I didn't love. Um, and then eventually the, the, the sounds stopped and then I turned, I, I, I didn't, I, I was going to say I turned off my headphones. I took off my headphones and eventually did fall asleep. But by then I just ended up like snoozing like for way longer because I needed extra sleep because I, I didn't get that sleep that I was going to originally. So by this time it's like. 4 30 something like that and i was like okay i still need to shower and whatever so after all of that and then breakfast and all of that then it was like way after the time that i said i was gonna stream and i was like oh i'm a fucking clown you know then i felt like i was angry because i didn't get enough sleep and then i got enough sleep but then i was annoyed at like everything and then when confronted about it mama ruby she's an icon but she's also like Oh, I wasn't gonna wait until you woke up. Like, oh, I was already, you know, like I already was doing like chores. Like if I sat down, I wasn't gonna wanna like clean the bathroom, like, or whatever. Like 
and I understand that it's like once you're like on that like you know rhythm of like getting stuff done but at the same time it's like girl what what did you think was gonna happen you know what i mean it's like what, did you just think that i wasn't gonna hear anything and that you were gonna be like a, a super stealthy ninja cleaning the bathroom like that's not gonna happen um but anyway i know that sounds so like silly and like a first you know world problem which it is but i was just like i was annoyed at myself i was annoyed at the whole situation because i was like Fuck, I could have like tried to pull through and like stream at the time I said I was gonna stream and then for a little bit I was like I might as well just not stream like fuck it and then I was annoyed It was just like a mixture of emotions and then I finally was like, you know what? I'm gonna go live and so I went live and then I tried doing that thing where you like You start a stream and then you restart it until you get quality options um, and then what happened was I noticed that I had like five five um g like videos in my like thing because obviously i restarted the stream so often it was like spamming my channel with like latest broadcasts and so this is part two of the fucking clownery <laughs> i deleted all of the streams that you know, like the like 10 second streams while I was testing the audio, like not the audio, like the quality options. And I decided and then I just casually attached Wednesday's stream to it. So now I don't have Wednesday's stream anymore. And so I, <laughs> I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was so pissed. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? What's wrong with me? <laughs> So by the time, like, I'm now live and all of that, I'm just like, I was just like, fuck. Like, can I do any, like, is today, like, is anything good gonna happen today? <laughs> I was like, fuck me. <laughs> I was so pissed. I was like, fuck. Oh. Because, like, they all have the same thumbnail, so naturally I was just like, oh, yeah, let me just delete all of these. And I didn't even notice, I guess, that they had a different title because, <sighs> I don't know, y'all. I was just so annoyed, and I'm, I'm still annoyed, and I'm just like, why? 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 <laughs> like, I'm just having a day, y'all. I'm just having a day, but I'm here, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna stream... I want to say hi to y'all and see where where we go from there. Um, hi Dex, hi Spin, hi Fly. She's gonna pull the well. I heard you cackling. At f no, 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 no. I'm really, really good at like being like silent when I'm laughing. Like I try to make like I feel like I'm as loud as if I was like snoring you know what i mean like i'm not like actively cackling at 5 a.m or anything of the sort so mama ruby cannot give me shit for any of that the only way the only day she could have given me shit was when i was up until like i think it was like two or three and i was playing first class trouble and i thought i was being quiet and i wasn't and she was like oh i had to wake up at six i couldn't fall asleep at by three like i I just couldn't fall asleep anymore, so I just I just didn't sleep. So I felt bad, and I did apologize for that, but she didn't even apologize for, like, waking me up. She was like, well, I was, was I just gonna clean it at, like, right now at five? And I was like, no, I would have woken up earlier if you didn't interrupt my sleep. <laughs> like, it was like a whole thing. I was like, ugh. And then like tomorrow I'm gonna have to wake up earlier because my brother and, and his wife are coming over. Um, so I'm gonna obviously have to wake up earlier because I think they're coming over for lunch and then they're spending the day. So I might not even make it to just gaming things tomorrow. Which was like another thing like, oh, thanks for the heads up. Um, <laughs> like she called, she called them like the other day, like on Thursday, I think or something. Wait, no, yesterday was Thursday, maybe Wednesday. 
she called. She was like, oh, I'm going to call your brother. I was like, okay. And then mid call, she's like, hey, do y'all want to come over on Saturday? And I was like, oh, <laughs> well, uh, so there's that. Um, I don't have enough time to fix my sleeping schedule. I do not have enough time for anything. So tomorrow is also going to be a day. Uh, thankfully, it's going to be more of like a day off, I guess. Like I'm not going to be like working or on anything. But I'm definitely gonna have to like wake up earlier than normal for me, cause they're coming. They're coming over for lunch, so like, yay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry for the rant. You know what? No, thank you for listening. Cause part of being a content creator is sharing, you know, what we're going through and the things that we're dealing with and whatever. So thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Um, how's everyone else's Friday going? Literally, please. I hope I hope all of y'all are having a better day than I am. <laughs> That's all I can hope for. The homophobia of today, right? Today's just out to get you, right? Lurk for work meeting. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm just trying my best. I it's that's a mood. That's a mood, honestly. That's that's a fucking mood. Yesterday was a mess, but today you're getting your first vaccine. Yes. Oh, that's exciting. Come on, vaccined girly. Y'all, speaking of the vaccine, I don't know how I feel about... Is it the CDC? Some kind of health regulation thing in the US is saying that people don't need to wear masks anymore if they're vaccinated. I'm like... I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that, y'all. I don't know if you want to tell people to not wear masks. Also, in the beginning of the pandemic, literally, like, our government was like, oh, it, we may not need, like, masks. We don't know how effective masks are. We might not need to wear them. Like, and they were just saying that because, like, you know, they were, like, they didn't want to, like, worry people or whatever. But it's like, girl, like, we can, we can handle a few more, like, months of wearing masks. That's okay. Like, it's one thing to tell people, like, hey, you know, it's safer for you to, like, go out or for you to, like, be with your friends and stuff like that, but still try to be careful. But it's, like, I've already read a story of someone who, like, their dad was in a store and someone was, like, you know you don't have to wear a mask anymore, right? And they didn't know if their dad was vaccinated or not. So it's, like... It's gonna start a thing, I feel like, for people who are, who are already anti, like, wearing masks and stuff like that. For them to be, like, to potentially, like, harass people wearing masks. Or for them to be like, oh, why are you wearing a mask? You don't have to wear a mask anymore. And it's like, you don't know if I'm vaccinated. <laughs> Which I'm not, still, unfortunately. But, you know, in the US, it's things are going a bit quicker. Um... But it's like, like, what are you doing? Th there aren't regulations for business and stuff to confirm if they've been vaccinated. Right. It's it's going to be messy. I think it's going to be messy. Like, you would think that people would be a little bit more careful. Like, it's like we're on our way out of the pandemic, right? And people are like, oh, you know, right now is a great time to be a clown. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, oh, right now is a great time to just not be careful and throw all kinds of worries away. And it's like, no, 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 don't do this. And it's weird because some, like, apparently in private, like, you know, like if you're going to an airport, you're still supposed to wear a mask. So it's just gonna make things more confusing. Like, why not just tell people like, hey, Continue wearing a mask, continue being careful because you don't know who, you know, is vaccinated and who's not. And like, you know what I mean? Just like, why? I'm going to keep wearing it because I've enjoyed not being sick. That's 
that's that's a fucking mood. I'm I'm definitely thinking like a, a post vaccination mood for me is definitely like wearing a mask in like you know like in a public transportation, especially if it's like packed, right? Like going on a bus and being like, "Oh, there's a lot of people in here." Putting on a mask or like before getting on a train or before going like going on an airplane actually it sounds great putting on a mask i'm like yeah let me not get fucking sick like during in that inside of that you know little cabin of like everyone sneezing and coughing and throwing up and shit like you know what i mean like yeah let me put on a mask before i get onto this plane so i don't get sick like it's not even about covid anymore it's it's more like yeah like i don't want to get sick like you know how many people like i've listen to podcasts of and stuff like that where they're like oh my god i got like sick from going to a convention well <laughs> if you wear a mask now that our society has kind of normalized wearing a mask then maybe like next time you go to a convention center wear a mask just a thought Like, you can always take them off to, like, p take a picture of some with someone and, like, whatever. But, like, definitely, like, if you're in a super crowded environment, like, wear a fucking mask. Like, why not? Not getting any cold or flu for a whole year has been pretty iconic, right? Right? It's, it's absolutely that. It's, I don't, I don't understand why people are, like, so, like, and I've already seen, like, some people on Twitter and stuff be like, well, people were so quick to follow CDC's orders as far as the, uh, wait, am I saying it right? CDC, yeah. People are like, oh, people were so quick to follow CDC's orders as far as wearing a mask, why are they so against following the orders now? Or, like, recommendations, not orders, that's my bad. But, like, I don't know, maybe because it sounds fucking irresponsible. And I'm like, of course it's, like, a, a not-safe-for-work account who's, like, ready to be like, oh, yeah, let me go have a fucking orgy and record it for my OnlyFans because I've been, like, doing solo content for, like, a, a year. And I'm like... Like, I understand what you mean, but it's like, at this point, it just sounds like you want to be with your friends and not be judged for it. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, calm down, y'all. Calm down. Like, it's okay. Get your masks. Wait a while. And then, you know, meet people. My only downside with a mask for me is that I have a level of slash tone of voice that gets lost in noise already and I can't speak up enough in crowd areas but like I can suck it up mmm yeah I know that like someone was developing and it's probably not within like a, a, a very friendly price range but I know that someone was developing like a mask that had like an, a built-in like microphone so that your voice wouldn't get muffled like like on the inside it had like a microphone on the outside it had a little speaker so like anytime you would speak it wouldn't get muffled i guess i don't know i just hope this doesn't turn into like a bullshit situation like I, and i mean this everywhere where like disabled people suddenly aren't given like accommodations anymore right or suddenly it's like oh you gotta come to the office like oh working from home is not realistic anymore or you know what i mean like all of these things that were like so helpful for so many people for so many different reasons all of a sudden it's like oh you're vaccinated you can come back to the office or like oh you're vaccinated suddenly we're gonna pretend the last year didn't happen and we're gonna go you know you know and we're just gonna go back to like a non, you know, accessible workplace, right? And it's like, why can't we have like a little like middle ground? <laughs> like, why can't we have a situation where like, 
maybe we don't go completely back to normal, but we also don't completely stay within, you know, what we're going through right now. Like, I'm sure there's a middle ground somewhere that we can get to without being like, oh, pandemic is over. Let's, you know, shake our tits and go back to normal. But it's like, define normal? <laughs> because a lot of people's normals isn't very accessible for other people. So that's something to consider. I have a, le a legitimate reason to dislike masks because I literally can't understand people wearing them because I can't lip read. So if I can deal with that, people can deal with not being able to go have their orgies for like a couple more months. Right, right. Or like to go back to a club or some shit like that. Like I know the gays are, I know the cis gays are steaming to go back to a packed club <laughs> which is fine like i'm not it's not a bad thing to want that but i'm just saying like you waited a year you can wait a little bit longer it's okay you can wait a little bit longer you know especially considering how some of them have never really stopped going to clubs or never really stopped going out and doing stuff anyway i'm like y'all can survive i promise you y'all haven't been at home since march of last year like i've been i've been home for like 90 percent of of the time since march of 2020 until right now is like may of 2021 i left the house like three four times I just hate the logic that like we have more ways of combating and ending this pandemic much quicker than any in history, but people enjoy to stay ignorant slash white people trying to make anything seem like they're being oppressed and I'm so tired. Yeah, absolutely. Like people feeling like being told to wear a mask or to stay at home is like infringing on their freedom. I'm like, this is why I could never be a polit like a politician because I would fully be like, Okay, you can go, you can, you can just not stay at home and potentially die of COVID. How does that sound? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, oh, it's infringing on my freedom. Sweetie, people are trying to protect you. <laughs> it's a fucking pandemic. What are you, like, hello? <laughs> like, if I was a politician, I would have been like, okay, yeah. And any anti-vaxxers, any anti-maskers or whatever, like, y'all can all meet... <laughs> at this place, at this time, in this building, we're gonna have nurses ready, you know what I mean? It's just like, girl, like, do you not see the news? Do you not see what's going on? It's like, I think it's such an extreme of like, it's, I think, it's actually very interesting how that works. It's like, the Eastern, and I, I understand like, if we're looking at a map, in which like Europe is in the center because obviously the world is round but but if Europe is in the center the US is in the left and the A and Asian countries are in the right it's kind of like there's a gradual shift between eastern countries where there's like this sense of community where even before the pandemic people wore masks because they're like oh I don't want other people to get sick because I'm feeling kind of under the weather and then it's kind of a gradual thing where like in European places, it's kind of like, nah. And then in there's the extreme of the US where it's like, by the time you get to the US, I feel like it's like people are like everyone for themselves. Nobody gives a shit about anything. They will, you know what I mean? They will be like, oh, vaccines. No, not for me. I don't care if anyone around me dies because I don't want the vaccine. It's very like, I feel like it's a gradual thing of like, from Eastern countries, everyone is more community-based, and as you get through, like, the we the more you go to the West, the more everyone is, like, selfish and self-centered and more, like, individual-centric. And, like, that's not great. Like, it's not, it's not a cute thing. Like, you're not everyone is, you, you're not a main character. <laughs> like, everyone, I feel like, Everyone has this main character syndrome. I love that, by the way, like on, on TikTok. 
that being described as for as main character syndrome i love that um it's it's like why Like you all, you know that you don't have to do. Like you can do things for other people, right? Like you, you. <laughs> like the world doesn't revolve around you. It's like when people were told, like, "Oh, you can't smoke indoors anymore." Oh my God, my freedom! Have you thought about how you smoking indoors is inflicting on other people's freedom to be at that place at all? Have you thought about you know? a compromise of like both of you can stay in there one of you just doesn't smoke or you can go outside or you can go to you know like a, a specific area of the restaurant that's for smokers or whatever it's like the world doesn't revolve around you like you wanting to smoke right now is making other people not either be able to be there at all because they may have like uh, respiratory issues or, you know, because they, they are, like, bothered by it or because they, you know, they hate it or, I don't know. It's just, like, so weird to me how there's, like, such a, like, self-centered. And it's very that as well of, like, yeah, like, white people taking any, like, thing and being, like, feeling like they want to be oppressed so badly like oh my god i have to wear a mask i'm like oh my god people are infringing on my rights and then uh, in the u.s people love to bring up the like is it like the constitution or whatever it's like oh my god this is like not in the uh, amendment of whatever the hell and it's like girl <laughs> girl jesus <laughs> it's 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 so it, it's just so like I, I was gonna say funny but it's not even funny it's like it's such like a weird thing you're right I didn't think about that wouldn't be a thing in other places as far as as far as what sorry because i'm pretty sure like every country has like a constitution and like stuff like that but like i i've never heard someone be like i mean well i have seen people like even even here i've seen people like do protests of like oh you're closing down the restaurants oh my god i'm protesting or like people in the arts for example like oh you're closing down venues and stuff and it's like i understand like yes like those those people need to eat and stuff like that but also it's like what what's what's the better solution for people to like continue being able to go to like the movies or to concerts in the middle of a pandemic like like, what are you expecting? Like, maybe, yeah, maybe the government could invest in ways for, like, maybe they could help restaurants have a takeaway system or they could help maybe, like, you know, theater companies hire, like, you know, like, camera crews or something and do, like, online shows or something. Like, maybe there, there could be a middle ground there. But I really don't get people who do, like, you know, protests or manifestations uh, as far as, like, oh, like, oh, we're going on lockdown, therefore I'm going to go out and protest for because I'm being told to stay at home for my own safety. Like, for me, that, that doesn't click. I don't understand why people do that. And then those same people are, like, looking, watching the news and being like, wow, look at those people in those Black Lives Matter protests. Oh, my God, look at them. Wow, in the middle of a pandemic, wow. And doing all that stuff, and you're like, sweetie, you were just going out. You were just complaining. You you went on a fucking protest to, because you didn't want to stay at home. 
And then, like, a week later, y'all are going to complain about, like, people actually protesting for actual things that are relevant and for things that matter and for things that can be fixed. Like, what's not clicking? Or people being like, oh, look at all the looting and all that shit. Meanwhile, there's, like, a... Sp- like there's like a soccer championship and their favorite team doesn't win therefore they like loot an entire fucking city over it like oh suddenly it's okay to loot okay interesting interesting like oh my god they want to take my guns away they're infringing on my rights in the constitution i'm like you don't need a whole arsenal in your house or nor do you need to carry them everywhere right What do you mean most people don't bring up very specific laws written in a 300-year-old document to be a clown? (laughs) Right. Literally, Black Lives Matter were fighting for actual rights and then white people were like, Oh my god, we need haircuts. Right! Or like, oh my god, I can't go to brunch anymore. Oh my god, I miss brunch. Oh my god, I want to go shopping. It's like... What? I remember even my parents, like, before they got vac- vaccinated, they were like, oh my god, but I need a haircut. I'm like, is it worth, like, risking your life over it? And they're like, but I need a haircut. And their thing was like, oh, you can say that because you're home. And, like, you're not going to be outside. And I'm like, but everyone also understands that we're in a pandemic? But I, I I think for me it just doesn't click that people are like I think I think it doesn't click for a lot of people that like just because just because places are open doesn't mean that it's safe to be at those places. And I think that's always been the thing for me where it's like the government doesn't care and I'm talking about literally any government. The government doesn't care if there's, like, a spike in cases. For them, I am 100% sure in their private meetings, they're like, oh, there's going to be some cases, but we need to open up the the economy so that we make money. Like, I am 100% sure that's the type of conversation that happened behind closed doors. And people are like, oh my god, my favorite restaurant is open again. Let me go and shake my tits over there. Like... Are you vaccinated? Is it going to be safe? In case you do get the virus, is it was it worth it? <laughs> like, is it worth you potentially being one of the people, like, being a part of the statistic of, like, being a person that ends up in the hospital or ends up in a coma or ends up even dying over it? Like, and I think people just don't understand the severity of it sometimes, to be honest. It's like, oh, the government opened everything. Let's all, everyone go out and do all the things. I'm like, no. (laughs) Like, what's, like, no. It's still, y'all know that the pandemic didn't go anywhere, right? Like, like, I don't, what's not, what's not clicking? And it's like, yeah, people always also say like, like, yeah, you can do stuff safely. And I'm like. I mean, it's it's always been you, you. We've all been told from the beginning that the best way to combat this was to stay at home. And yet y'all are like, well, I can do this like safely. <laughs> and like, I'm not going to I'm not saying that I've, I haven't gone out of the house since like the year started. Like, yeah, one time I want I went to a grocery store one time. I had to go to vote and one time. I did hang out with a friend and we we were very safe and I did talk about it here, but I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel like, yeah, I want to do this all the time. Like I only did it that one time in a very like non-busy place and we were super, super duper careful. But even then I was like, oh, I don't know if, you know, like it was nice and all, but I don't know if it was worth me potentially getting the virus. And like, yeah, you can be super careful and still get it. So for me, it's like, it's not that I want to like scare anyone or be like oh you know if you go out you you can get the virus but like i mean yeah if you go out you can get the virus like the only way of preventing it is by staying at home like that's literally the only thing we can all do to prevent that but Luke, pride pub you know 
<laughs> Hi, Ruin. Thank you so much for the resub. For that 10 month resub. Mm. How are you, Diva? How are you? I. <laughs> It's a moment. Today has been a moment. And, um, Tihi, here I am, just talking, ranting, apparently. That's all I've been doing today. So there's that. <laughs> Being a diva, love that. Love that. Excited for the weekend, everyone. Like, even with stuff like, oh, like, my parents inviting my brother to come over, I'm like, neither of them are vaccinated, neither am I. Like, is it worth, like, all of the energy being put into, like, being super, super careful just for, like, a hangout that we could have, like, in a few months, potentially, but, like, more, like, safely? To me, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Not like I had a say in it, but, you know... <laughs> Not like I had an opinion on that. Um, but yeah. There's there's that. Ooh, not that, Ruin. Ruin! Not that. I delete the message. Not this. Not this. Not that. I hate that so much. <laughs> Unite! <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh. I think... I think she did. I think Miss Crown spelled it right. But I could be... I could be wrong. Doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> I don't want to look at it. I don't want to see it. That's the point. <laughs> the point is, I hate it. <laughs> the point is, I hate it here. <laughs> the point is, no. Absolutely not. Not something I wanted to type right on my work computer. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Y'all, already the chaos, the drama, the conflama. <laughs> screaming, screaming, absolutely screaming. Um, uh, I'm okay. Um, I kind of had a rough a little bit of a rough start to my day but uh it's fine i'm just i'm honestly i'm more like i'm just more annoyed at the fact that i accidentally deleted a stream that i didn't want to delete um because i didn't archive it either so i'm just like annoyed at that um that like i fully lost like a full stream um but other than that, I'm like, I'm okay. I'll be fine. It's it's fine. It's not the first stream that I've lost over, like, th all of the years. But, uh, yeah. I was, I, know, I was kind of, um... I was kind of talking with some folks yesterday about, um... Like, Pride is around the corner. I guess today is just gonna be a stream of me ranting and talking about how I'm feeling, I guess. Um, but I, I was, I was talking to some folks yesterday about how pride is coming and I have like nothing planned. And also it's like a weird mixture of like one feeling like I'm behind already. Cause it feels like everyone is already planning stuff. Everyone is inviting people. Everyone is being invited. Everyone is doing something. Everyone has something like, that they're doing or that they're getting ready for. So I look at that and I'm immediately like, oh, I'm falling behind. 
and I feel like I'm already like, oh, I don't, I didn't think about anything. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I want to do, like, I don't know, ugh, I don't know anything. So, like, I immediately got overwhelmed. And then there's, like, that slight thing of, like, oh, nobody has invited me for anything yet. Which is, like, I don't want any pity. I just, I'm just saying. Um, but it's, like, a, a combination of, like, oh, shit, I guess I should prepare. I should, like, plan something mixed with I don't know what I want to prepare. And I'm, like, fuck. Like, this, like, month that it's supposed to be about, like, celebration, about fun times and whatever has turned into, like an overwhelming thing of like feeling like I have to like do something cool or plan something flashy or plan something like extra fun or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, does anyone else like feel kind of like that? Like, especially like the streamers in the chat, like, I'm like, oh God, I, I guess I should do something. I don't know what though. And I don't know who I would invite and I don't know. Uh, so I just get like overwhelmed. Like even for my podcast, I haven't even like been like actively inviting people. I feel like I got a little overwhelmed at some point. So I just like kind of like stopped. Um, Like I did my birthday thing and I was like, okay, that went really well. I was like, yay. And then it's like, oh shit, I guess I should plan something for my anniversary. Oh shit, I guess I should plan something for pride. And then I'm just at this point where I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Send help. Oh my God. And I am going to be doing some stuff in June because like uh, E3 is happening in June. So we're going to be doing stuff on Just Gaming Tings. Our first E3 coverage uh, on Just Gaming Tings because we started in like October of last year. So we didn't get to uh, we didn't get to do like, you know, E3 coverage, even though E3 didn't happen. So I guess that that was, you know, probably for the best. But yeah, our first E3 is happening and there's like obviously Summer of Games is a thing. So we're going to be working on that on the Just Gaming Teens channel. But like for this channel, I have no idea. I'm like, do I want to do I want to plan like another like panel type podcast? Do I want to like plan like multiplayer games with people? And like, if so, which games and which games are going to work on like, you know, wh which games can I actually stream? Versus which game, you know what I mean? It's just like so overwhelming and I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know who I want to have. I don't know anything. I'm just like overwhelmed. So overwhelmed. Like sometimes I have some ideas, but I'm just like, I don't know how to go about it. I don't know. You saw everyone getting pride stuff ready and you were like, oh, should I do something? I haven't even thought about it. I have nothing planned. Same. Same. I literally have, haven't made any plans for Pride. I've got tons of stuff planned for both this month and July, though, so it might be good to not do a ton in June. I'm super excited for our first E3. Yeah. Um, my main thing is, like, as sad as it sounds, it feels like Pride is that month where, like, as a queer person, it's your opportunity to, like, Put your best foot forward and and like hope that like company because like that's the time where like the industry is like watching queer people more closely right so there's like kind of like a feeling of like oh during pride i have to be on my best like you know like i have to my content has to be extra fun extra iconic i have to be super organized have all these things because like what if a brand is looking for like a non-binary person in Europe to represent their brand? Or what if someone wants to like have a thing or have me talk about on, you know what I mean? Just like, um, you never know who's going to be watching during Pride and who's going to be like looking for queer people uh, to like represent their brands or even like for future stuff. Like they might be looking just to like take note about and be like, hmm. Um, so I'm, I, I, there is a little bit of like feeling overwhelmed at like, what do I want to do for pride? You know, like a part of me almost wants to do like panels, like maybe like a weekly panel about like different topics that have to do with like the queer community. Um, 
and maybe like a weekly like multiplayer thing where like maybe one week I do Mario Kart, one week I do Overwatch, one week I do Fortnite, you know, just like, I guess like different like game, gaming sessions prepared, but um, I, I, I'm gonna have to, I guess, like write all of that down and like think about what I wanna do and like, even for charity, I think it would be really cool if I had like a monthly goal. Um, and then like, you know, by having all those events, hopefully kind of push that like charity goal. I don't know. I feel like I've done so much charity this year that I, I don't wanna like overwhelm y'all with too many with too much like charity fundraising. So yeah, definitely let me know though how you feel about like a potential fundraising. I don't think I've done any fundraising this month yet, so potentially we could just like Save it for that. I'm fully prepared to fumble through pride. Aww. Welcome back, Fly. <laughs> That's the only thing you're prepared. That's funny. Um, yeah, like for me, I'm just like, I just get so overwhelmed by all of the things of the things. Those sound like great ideas. Yeah, it's just like a matter of like <laughs> actually like reaching out to people and actually, you know, doing something. I loved raising money for Trans Lifeline last year, so I might, I, I think it would be nice to do it again this year. Maybe, maybe I'll do a Trans Lifeline fundraiser. Let me write all this down, shit. <laughs> Pride 2021, I guess we're planning Pride. Weekly Pride panels. Weekly Breakfast pride panels. Don't all big mountains look intimidating at first? We just gotta take the first step. I know, yeah, that's what I need to do. Okay, let me look at June. Suddenly this is the work with me stream. There's one, two, three, four. Do we count the last week of June as like a week? Because there's only three days. There's only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Do we count that as a week? I guess if I did a podcast on every Wednesday, I guess if I did an episode every Wednesday, that could be five episodes, or if I did it like Sunday, on like every Sunday maybe, that could be a thing. So okay, maybe four to five panels, maybe four, maybe I'll do four. Five panels sounds like a lot. Weekly breakfast pride panels. What topics would we talk about? I was thinking like the basic stuff is like maybe an episode for like sexual, like sexual identities and have people that are, you know, gay, bi, pan, poly, Etc. <laughs> Maybe one for gender identities with like trans and non-binary folks. And then two more. Hmm. What could be like interesting? interesting like topics for what to what what would you actually like want to either be a part of or like watch yourself <laughs> um because i'm trying to like think um about what would be interesting to 
to talk about as far as like pride and it's hard because like you don't want to have like you don't want to have like the same conversations that you always have with people um what was the question sorry apparently people don't know how to walk into a building i <laughs> Love that. Um, I'm I'm like trying to like brainstorm like ideas for like panels that y'all would like to watch on my channel, like for me to host, I guess. Um, why is my mouse doing this? Oh, I hate that. Pride in different countries and how it's celebrated. Hmm. Like a little, an international pride panel. Maybe something for people on the A spectrum. I feel like those identities are always super underrepresented in pride events. That's a good idea. I didn't know if I want to, like, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to include because like in my in my head i would include ace people in the sexual identities because i feel like it would be something it would be like a part of the community that i would want to represent with like because like it i think often people think like asexual or arom aromantic people aren't isn't a sexuality uh due to the concept of being aromantic or asexual people just I guess kind of exclude them from that conversation so I think it would be interesting to include them a part of that conversation if that makes sense And obviously, with my, you know, with the people that I choose, I, I, I definitely want to be very inclusive about who I pick to be on the, sh on like each panel. Like, it wouldn't be a thing where like it's cis gays talking about all the things, or you know what I mean? It's like I would try to have people that represent different parts of the community because intersectionality is a thing, right? I think international pride would be interesting to have. I don't know. It would probably be a little bit difficult to to put together an episode. Maybe it would have to be like pre-recorded. But it could be interesting to have an episode where I have people from different parts of the world and they talk about what pride is like in their country. I kind of like that idea, international pride. Aero Ace would be nice. I wasn't sure what that was, so I was reading up on it right now. Yeah. Do y'all think it would be, it, it would be more appropriate for me to have, oh, excuse me, for me to have an uh, a romantic, a spectrum, like panel on its own, rather than like, you know, <laughs> rather than like, including it a part of like the sexual identities or part of the conversation or like panel. It would be nice to actually hear from people who identify as that. Like you said, you don't want Siskiyou talking about stuff that they don't know seemingly nothing about. Yeah, my 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 only thing is like, do I include a conversation about asexuality and aromantic 
identities within a sexual identity. I think there's enough there that would be interesting to talk about its own thing, but I also totally get your point of not wanting to exclude ace people from the sexuality panel. Maybe do both. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe something focused on media, like queer icons in games or related media. Ooh. That would be really cool. Queer media or queer representation, something of the sort. And I think that would be actually very interesting if I could get like game devs and stuff on there. Queer media. You know what I mean? Like if I got people that write games, people that design games, people that um, games including like potentially like tabletop games as well you know what I mean like I think it could be very interesting or like people that write media in general or if they're like a journalist or something I think that could be very interesting actually to have a conversation on queer media with like people that make queer media <laughs> Panel. Okay, so sexual identities, you know, pending name, a panel on different types of sexual identities. Gender identities would obviously be a panel on gender identity featuring trans and non-binary folks. International Pride, a panel on what Pride is like in different parts of the world. Queer media representation, a panel on a panel with people that work in queer media and what their pers perspectives and experiences are like cute oh my god y'all this is coming together participants I feel like I could get like maybe like five people and then including me as the moderator There's someone I follow who is very active in making sure queer individuals are included in the tabletop space. Awesome. Kind of love that it's turned into a cute little work and twerk moment. I know, right? Now suddenly I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> we could actually, you know, we can actually put this together with your feedback. <laughs> um... Sorry, I'm just, I'm putting together this little notepad thing. <laughs> I'm putting together this little notepad moment so that I maybe I can turn it into a Google, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just do it right now. I turn it into a little Google Doc. A little Google Doc.
but honestly, y'all, thank you so much for like listening to me and like, you know, like hearing me out and like, I don't know, like being so damn nice to me and allowing me to just like do what I do, I guess, without like, you know, judgment or, you know, <laughs> you know, it's what I deserve. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. <laughs> it's what she deserves. <laughs> there she is. Now that's really, really sweet of you to say. I'm just, I'm just trying my best. I'm just trying my best. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Oh. All these fonts are so tiny. Jeez. <laughs> I love being a soundboard. Love that. I love that. Love a little flourish, very inspired. Wait, what? What did I do? <laughs> Bounce your ideas and big fucking tits off of me. I... Not that. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Absolutely not. You did a cute little hand flourish before the sneeze. Oh, did I? <laughs> love that. Love that. Love that. I didn't even notice, to be honest with you. On titty physics and teach everyone a t <laughs> titography. Love that. Love that. I think you're on to something. <laughs> no. <laughs> Of course, Dex is not into it. Surprising absolutely no one. <laughs> okay, love. Oh, not that. Hold on, I'm just working on this little document. Uh, nope. Damn it. Okay, perf. Okay, okay. I'll I'll work on this later. So Pride, twenty twenty one. Love that. Have my little panels. Um, have a little thing for my panels. Um. So we'll see, we'll see about those. Um, as far as games, I feel like I definitely could do, let me write this down. So as far as like game nights, I definitely could do for like each of each week, I feel like I could do up to like five. My only thing is like, you know what? Let's not start with a negative. Okay. so. One that I think I could do is definitely Mario Kart. That one I can definitely host and it works fine because it's console based. So that one is t totally fine. Um, I think Fall Guys wouldn't be too bad. 
So, okay, Mario Kart is how many people total? So it's five weeks, so I need something something for... Okay, 12 people total. So for Mario Kart, uh, let me change that to little dots. Okay, and then change that to numbers. No, not A. Give me a number. Okay, I guess I have to like not do that. Okay, I need 12 people, myself included, so obviously let me just put my name there so that I know I have me in there. <laughs> so I don't forget that, you know, one of the 12 people has to be me. Um, what else could I do? On the Switch, I don't think there's any other multiplayer games that I could do. Um, I think Fall Guys, I could stream that. It wouldn't be like super, you know... It wouldn't be the most polished stream, but Fall Guys, I can do that, and that's only four people, uh, myself included. So let me, you know, include myself in that. Um, what other games could I do? Was um, I'm gonna have to test First Class Trouble on stream. I'm assuming it won't be as laggy as it was. So I could totally do like first class trouble. I think first class trouble could be cute. Yeah, good thing it's like the f the 14th right now cuz I definitely need I definitely need to contact a lot of people. <laughs> I definitely need to contact a lot of people in advance. Um, so Fall Guys is four people. I think First Class Trouble was okay. First Class Trouble, that's six people, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, not that. Um, so that's one, two, three games. I don't have Mario Party. Among Us I could do. Apparently people are saying that the Fall Guys update implemented private sessions. So it could be more than four if needed. Oh. Interesting. I haven't, I haven't seen that. Let me look into it. Let me, you know what? Let me boot up Fall Guys right now. <laughs> I think Fortnite could be cute. I don't know how my stream handles it, so I guess I could do a little test at some point um, and test Fortnite and see how she would do on stream. Overwatch probably too. I could do that or Apex or something like that. I think Among Us, I, I could do Among Us once. Once or twice. I think there was also that game that Pants suggested, that Pants was talking about on just gaming things the other day, which is a free game. So I think that could be cute too, to get people on board with that. I think it's Identity 5? Is that what it was called? How many people do you need for that? How many people total are in that? Is it like four, like Debbie the Light? I could do Debbie the Light if I needed. I think it's on PC too. Oh God. I agree to all. In terms of service, mm. 
Four in survival mode, but there are different modes with different numbers. Hmm. Guada. I mute the game. Okay. Is there a private server? Custom shows. Host your own Fall Guys show and invite your friends. I don't know if I would do that though, because that's like a lot of people. And I don't know if I want to have like so many people on board for like a private Fall Guys server kind of situation. Um, so I'm thinking of just doing like a cute little like normal Fall Guys moment. I don't I don't know if I I don't know if I have the mental energy and the spoons for that to plan something big like that. I think I'm going to do like four people for identity identity V. And then like maybe for doing the stream and like if someone wants to join and like do a different mode, I guess we can always do that and like do a different number of people or something like that. Okay, Mario Kart for sure I can do. Fall Guys I can do. First Class Trouble is a potential... I think I could do it. It might not run like the best, but I it, it, it will be doable. Identity V is, is probably doable too. Um, so that's one two, three, four. What, what would be a good fifth one for stream? I'm kind of like, what game would run well on stream, but, and it would still be like decent to like play. I'm thinking Fortnite could be it. I think we could do a, a squad of four as well. I was just hoping that people could host small groups in those private shows and make it more hectic in chaotic versus friends. I don't know if there was a number of requirement for the private shows. Yeah, the the thing is like you, in order for it to be like a decent amount of rounds per game, you would you would have to have like a lot of people in it. You know what I mean? Like at least like. I feel like 10 people would be like bare minimum, you know what I mean? Or even like 12, I guess 12 for like a Mario Kart moment. Like that's kind of a lot. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe even like just 20, I feel like wouldn't be enough. You know what I mean? Maybe if I just planned like one game night and I was like, okay, let me do like a huge Fall Guys day where it's like, 30 streamers or something like that and everyone's doing Fall Guys or, or something like that. Um, which would be super cool, but I don't know if I have the energy to plan that. <laughs> um, maybe I'll do Fortnite. Fortnite was super fun. I'll do Fortnite. Fortnite. And that's also four people, if I'm not mistaken, myself included. Love that. So we have Mario Kart, Fall Guys, First Class Trouble, Identity V, and Fortnite. Cute! Five little weeks. I think we could do it like every Wednesday or something like that. Because <clears throat> there's five Wednesdays in June. I'm thinking the podcast we could potentially do like every Friday. I love that I was like, I'm overwhelmed, I don't know. And then suddenly I'm like talking about it. I'm just like planning it. <laughs> suddenly we're planning. Um, does, does this sound cute? And I feel like maybe Mondays would be like my regular streams. <clears throat> you know? Maybe like a cute little moment of like, maybe like like queer games or like, you know what I mean? Like maybe I could do 
I could play games that are like queer related or um, something like that. I think that could be cute. If I'm not done with Final Fantasy VII Remake by then, that is. And then on in July we can do our regular <laughs> our regular scheduled programming. Sounds cute. You're suddenly planning iconic things. Aw. You're too sweet. You're too sweet. If you want to invite me to literally anything, just let me know. Oh, honestly, if you're a if you're a friend, I will a hundred percent invite you. To all the things of the things. Absolutely. Oh, not that. Yeah, absolutely. I would be very happy to have you on, honestly. Tee Thank you all for like the amazing ideas too, like. It's actually like we got a really, like really cool ideas from like the different panels and stuff like really, really cool. That's an interesting opener as a, of a question. <laughs> That's an interesting question. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a choice. Um... <laughs> I just think it's so funny that people like they don't just they just don't know how to just say hi it's like you know you don't have to like do a thing when you enter a stream <laughs> like it, you you don't have to like do a thing when you when you enter a room like you can just like exist <laughs> It's it's so funny to me, honestly. I'm just like, what? <laughs> what even? Oh, look at us planning. Ah. Love that. Love that. We love a, a, a planner, a planstress. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. I'm just like very excited now. I'm like, yay, I have things that I can work towards now. <laughs> I'm like, wow, look at me having ideas. That's awesome, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> As I try not to think about the fact that I deleted a full like Final Fantasy VII Remake stream, I'm still kind of annoyed at that. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm so annoyed at that. <laughs> Cause it was like a good stream. Like we got to the the Shinra ta like the mid the Shinra building. Ugh, oh, what a shame. What a shame. We did all the fabulous uh, Tifa gameplay. What a shame. What a shame, y'all. Absolutely disgusting <laughs> that I missed all all of that. But yeah, that's gonna be fun. I'm definitely gonna be like looking into uh, sending invitations and stuff. Um, 
definitely and see what would what would be what would work for people i think for some of these panels there's there's definitely a possibility for me to not do them live although it would be really cool to do it live because obviously f like viewer questions um but you know i think i'm thinking the international pride one might be one that i may have to like do you know like a pre-recording of uh, like a, a weird time for everyone involved because of dif of different time zones, right? Um, so, <laughs> tee <-hee. laughs> But I, I, I would love for most of the panels to be, you know, uh, like a, a, a fun time where people could, um, you know, be like a part of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and see who I could who I could get for like these panels and, and stuff like that. I think it would be really cool. Um really cute. Um Tee. <laughs> Definitely a lot of work ahead of me. Definitely. Uh but I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be fun kind of like organizing it and being and like trying to get a an idea of like who could be on each thing and like all of that all that fun stuff <laughs> but yeah what else do we have coming up uh tomorrow there's a new just gaming things episode i don't know i there's a like 90 percent chance that i'm not going to be there unfortunately but my friends are going to be on there, so definitely check them out. Um, I'll definitely try to at least be in chat if I can. Um, but I'm not going to be able to make it to the actual episode, so me. Um, I I definitely should be able, yeah, I will 100% be able to do uh, anime night on tomorrow. Anime night. So... Definitely, I'm not sure. Uh, we finished season two of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and so I'm not sure if we're gonna dive into. Maybe I'll put up a poll tomorrow or something, and put up a poll like if y'all wanna start season three already, if y'all wanna do a different like anime slash animated show for like a season or something to like do something different. Uh, and then of course on Sunday, we're gonna do movie night. So, um, tee -hee. Devil is a part-timer since y'all wanted breaks. Um, yeah, we could do that for sure. I'm thinking of, of changing up the times as well where, when we do the the anime and movie night just to make sure that like we open a possibility for people to join like maybe if we do it earlier maybe more people can do it uh, or something like that you know what I mean so maybe I'll try to like do them a little bit earlier or something like that um, or maybe I'll put up a poll or like see people's availabilities if there's like a different day that works better for everyone or something. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, let me see if I don't think they have it on. I don't think they have it on Netflix for me. So let me look up. Um, let me look that up on on Crunchyroll potentially. Okay, turns out just typing "devil" does not work because there's a lot of um, of animes that have "devil" in the name. Tur turns out, um, <laughs> turns out there's a lot of um, there's a lot of anime that has. <laughs> That has devil in the title. W wouldn't you? Wouldn't you imagine? <laughs> the devil is a part timer. 
Oh, I can just go on my anime list and see where they have, like, where, where it's, like, where you can stream it. Oh, it's Funimation. We don't have Funimation here. Oh, not that. Not me accidentally opening the little intro. Well. <laughs> oh, it's on Hulu as well. Love that, love that. Wait, is it on Netflix? Maybe different region. Maybe different region. Maybe so, maybe so. Yeah, it's not available in my country. Yeah, it's not in my region, unfortunately. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. The internet is a very interesting place. I'm sure we can figure something out. <laughs> I'm sure we can figure something out. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, one, yeah, one of y'all can host it too, for sure. For sure. Y'all, what's this? What is this stream? <laughs> we're just kind of like. We're just kind of doing stuff. I'm like, what are we, what is, what is even the theme of the day? What, what are we even, what are we even doing? <laughs> what are we even doing? What is the vibe? We're just doing things, right? apparently. Apparently so. <laughs> Tiki. Just doing things. But yeah, what a chaotic day it's been. I, I, I even thought about not streaming. I'm glad I did. I was at least going to do a work and twerk moment. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to stream. I wanted to stream. Hi, Nico. How are you? Lovely to see you. How's it going? I hope you're doing well today. Nico, I was just literally like talking to chat about that conversation that um, I that little rant that I put on um, the RA discord where I was feeling overwhelmed and stuff like that. And everyone was so nice. Like we got to a point where like I'm, I literally like made plans for Pride live on stream. I was like, wait, what if I did a panel? What if I did this? What if I did that? So like... <laughs> So like now we just have like so many ideas and that I wrote down and I'm just like I have some people to I have some people to reach out to now. <laughs> I manifested. I did. Like suddenly I was like, you know, I put it out there. I got that energy out there and I was like what should I do? And then like we just got all these ideas for like things that we could do and and then tee -hee. <laughs> and then here we are um so definitely definitely gonna be reaching out um over the next uh days tm i don't know when uh, i don't know how many days it's gonna take me to fill all of this out because i decided let me have weekly panels and weekly game nights so <laughs> You know, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be great. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be f wonderful. But 
but I'm um, super excited. How are you doing? How are you doing, Nico? Hope you're, hope you're having a good one. Sounds so much fun. I'm excited for what you have in store. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to try to have fun with it. I'm, I'm going to have, I'm going to try to have fun with it all and uh, like take it one day at a time and like maybe if I can do weekly maybe I'll just you know have a couple panels or you know what I mean like I'm just gonna try to take it one day at a time and like having all these ideas but then like being open to adapting if I need to or if I need to change something up or um, what have you you know you know I was gonna say something else and I forgot, but that's okay. That's my life. I just try to speak and I forget. <laughs> I just try to speak and then I forget because I got distracted by something else. So love that. Love that for me. Yeah. I'm kind of I'm 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 kind of thinking like, okay, I've been live for almost two hours. Do I wanna like play a game? Do I want to keep the stream short and just kind of dip out? Like, what's what's up? Like, what? And if I do play a little game, what game do I play? Do I want to play Final Fantasy VII? Do I want to play a, another game? Do I want to test different games and see if other games will work? Or, I don't know. I do the same. I'm forgetful. So so often thanks ADHD. <laughs> I definitely, definitely, definitely have to look into a diagnosis for ADHD too. Um, Cause I certainly, I think TikTok thinks that I have ADHD because TikTok probably knows that I watch a lot of, like I, I tend to like, when I'm scrolling, if a video has to do with ADHD, I tend to watch and tend to relate. So I think TikTok has kind of clocked me on that. So love that for me. Um, <laughs> love that for me. So yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> what is something that you learned about yourself by scrolling through TikTok? <laughs> what is something that you've learned about yourself? And you were like, oh, wow, I thought I was just here for the memes. If you have experiences similar to ADHD, I'm pretty sure you have it. Self-diagnosis is valid. I know. I try not to, like, you know, say it because there's, like, you know, people, there's a thing with, like, self-diagnosis. And um, so I'm, I always try to be like, you know, unofficial diagnosis, but maybe, and you know what I mean? <laughs> I try to be like, Ooh, I don't know. Uh, but I fully, always, always fully relate to like a lot of things that are related to ADHD videos and stuff like that. I know, TikTok really did. TikTok really did stare into my soul. <laughs> It really did. Ow, I just hit myself. I just hit my, my knee on my desk. Thankfully, it wasn't like noisy or anything. But it happened. <laughs> but it happened, y'all. Can you believe? Can you believe? What is this stream? I'm just like talking about hitting my knee on my desk. <laughs> What's happening today? Hello, hi. Oh my God. It's the it's the chaotic energy for me. It's the chaotic energy for me. <laughs> what's what's happening here? Knee stream. Mm, love that. I didn't learn it from TikTok, but somehow she learned about my IBS, and I need to know how she got this information. Not this. Not this. I hate that. I hate that. Oh my god. That's so rotted. It is kind of scary how they just like... 
understand sometimes. Not the knee reveal. I <laughs> I think I've I've definitely I've definitely done a I've definitely done a knee reveal before. Do y'all not remember that stream where I think it was yeah, I think it was how you like that. And at the end, they had a part of the choreo where your knees are supposed to touch the ground. And I was like, oh, it's over. <laughs> oh, it's over for me and my knees. You're kidding. Definitely have seen your knees, right? I, I was like, I'm pretty sure I did show my knees. I was like thinking about it. I was like, did I? My poor knees that day, I know. It was rotted. It was, it was not cute. It was not, it was not cute. Get some knee pads. Are you gonna pay for them? Like, um, hello? <laughs> I guess I should invest in some knee pads, you know, because this year I'm getting vaccinated. Um. <laughs> anyway, wow. Ruby, <laughs> is this is this unexpected behavior for me? Is this unexpected behavior? Come on. I'll be listening while I make brunch. Sounds good. <laughs> Y'all decide every day to click on my stream and you hear the words, it's clowning time, and you see them in your go live notifications and then expect me to not be a clown? <laughs> and then there's an expectation of non clownery to take place? Sounds like y'all need to change your expectations. <laughs> Sounds like y'all need to reevaluate. Also, just do that in bed or something. Be comfy. Love yourself. Well, I mean, if I'm using, like, knee pads, I'm loving myself. You know? <laughs> no, but I was actually going to say something to the effect of, like, you know... You definitely want to do such activities with people who will respect your well-being and therefore you would be comfy enough in where you wouldn't have to, you know, be on your knees on the ground. What if my man is 50 feet tall? What I do what would I do then? Well, you would log off of Pornhub. <laughs> and then um <laughs> and then meet people that have actual human heights. Uh <laughs> Kind of rude. That was kind of rude. <laughs> I recognize that. That was kind of rude. And I don't know why I chose that website out of uh, many others, but because I was gonna say VR at first, but I was like, Dex is gonna clock me because Dex doesn't have VR. So I was like, where would he watch? bar a tittied 50 feet tall man. I was like, I don't fucking know. So I just said porn. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't consume animated adult content. So I wouldn't know. So I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, maybe they have that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't see nothing on there. I, uh, my content is uh, not safe for work Twitter accounts. That's the content I, I consume. 
Oh, this is a cute, a cute little track. Ridge Racer Remix. This is cute. Not an archaeologist. <laughs> Not that. Did the um, did the captions do a goof with that one? Is that what happened? <laughs> well. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about that. Oh! I didn't read. I didn't read Spin's message. I thought I already read it. Your experience is not a universal. I don't know. Get a ladder. I'm not an archaeologist. <laughs> not an archaeologist. Just being a clown. Oh, I'm just a clown, sir. I'm just a clown, sir. I've seen um I've seen a, a a a an edit not an edit but like art of like I think it was supposed to be Chris Redfield but like wearing the Lady D outfit with like huge fucking bara titties popping out of it and like a little corset moment and I think a little hat too I think. It was either supposed to be Chris or it was supposed to be like a male version, which I'm like, like, I understand that not everybody is sexually attracted to women, but do, I guess, I, my thing is like, do we need a, a, a male version of that? Like it was, a, it, it's cute art, don't get me wrong. It's seductive art and there's something to be said about androgyny, but I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe it's like not that deep at all, but there was a part of me that was like, do we need like a male version of this? Like, why can't people just like draw the characters as they are kind of thing? Like, I don't know. I think for me, it's kind of like, there's so many male characters who are already so attractive. Like, why do you need to turn a female character that's prominent and like make them a male character? That's kind of where I stand. Like, not where I stand with that, but that was kind of my, my thought when I saw that, right? Because like, my first thing was like, ooh. And then my second thing was like, huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't, like, repulsed by it, or I wasn't, like, you know, I wasn't, like, offended or anything. But, like, a part of me was like, why, why are we, why are we doing that? I don't know. Maybe it's not that deep. Feel free to tell me. Maybe it's not that deep. If they have it go both ways. Mm. Like if they draw male characters. I guess people do. People do gender bend, gender bend, which I guess is kind of problematic, uh, like a gender bend version of a character because then it's just not that character. <laughs> Because part of that character is their identity. So if you're doing... With cosplay is different. Cosplay, I don't care. Cosplay, I'm like, yes, dress up as a character that you want. Like, if you want to be that character, dress up as that character. But I think with art, there's a little bit of a thing. And I don't know, maybe I'm gender... I'm non-binary, for people who don't know. So maybe my non-binary identity is kind of like in a weird middle ground of like, is that problematic? Is that not problematic? Do I have an issue with it? Do I not have an issue with it? Uh... <laughs> what you saw, yes, it's people putting Chris in the outfit. Mm. Got it. I think it, I, I thought so, but I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
gender bent character art i don't think it's inherently problematic or shouldn't be a thing but being trans it does kind of feel weird to me yeah i i, I get you if it's like a character dressing a different like if it's like yeah chris but i yeah, I guess the thing with that specific piece of art is that it's not, like, gender-bent. It's just, like, Chris wearing the Lady D outfit, which is not necessarily gender-bending. And, and the person, I, I don't think the artist labeled it as gender-bending either. They just, it was just, like, Chris wearing the outfit, which is very attractive. Um, but, you know, y'all know, y'all know me. I just go on rants. Why draw them as a cis person when the character could be trans? Hmm. Right. I think it's more like... It's like people are willing to accept a gender-bent version of a cis character rather than a trans character. You know what I mean? Like, there's this almost, like, fetishization of, like, the a female version of that male character rather than, like, a an actual trans person. You know what I mean? I feel like there's a little bit of fetishization that kind of goes with that, I guess. I don't know. Hi, Sid. How are you? Happy Friday, your radiance. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. Your radiance. Oh, I'm obsessed. <laughs> that was really nice. Not sin coming in here and like <laughs> making me feel a certain kind of way. It's probably because on the low, that's what they think trans people are. Mmm. Mmm. I mean, fetish fetishization of trans folks is definitely a problem too. So it probably stems from that. It's kind of like. It's almost like an othering of people, right? Like, for them, it's like... You're like this mystical creature that stands in between the borders of gender. <laughs> or like... I don't know, there's like so many different things, because like, for some people... They probably get off on men dressing up as women because they see that as something of that being demasculating is that's i don't i don't know if that's a word but you know what i mean it's like removing masculinity from a mat from a guy for them is like embarrassing therefore fulfilling that kind of embarrassing kink fetishization kind of thing where like you know <laughs> like if y'all weren't out here thinking that trans people were just somehow in costume, that they're real people, we wouldn't have to have that convo, you know? Right. Um, fetishization, right? It's hard to say, too. Like, damn. I have to, like, think twice before I say it. That or being, like, gender light and not their whole ass selves. Hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. It's, it's, there's, like, various levels to it. And I think sometimes for, like, women, the idea of dressing up like a guy, kind of, there's, like, this thing of, like, an element of, like, but th that's the thing. It's, like, it's not seen as a bad thing when, like, a woman dresses up in, like, male clothes because that's more seen as, like, empowering. It's seen as, like, because masculinity is seen as powerful and masculinity is seen as like inherently like attractive, sexual, etc. So just I guess like an, an, an interesting little thing that I just kind of thought about right now because apparently that's what we're doing today. We're just talking and we're just randomly having these like thoughts and just these things flying off of our moves.
because there's also a thing it's like i think when i i don't i never see a problem when like a female character is um when a female character is like wearing like male clothes because for them it's like oh you're wearing that and it's usually like oh my god they're so hot but i think with like a male character wearing female clothes it's it's either like oh wow that's so hot or like oh my god that's so funny you know what i mean i think that that's where the difference is it's like i feel like there's a middle ground of people that are like oh that's kind of that's Ooh, okay. And then there's people who are like way too into it. And there's people who are like way too into making fun of it. If that makes sense. Hi, yuck. You epic legend. Oh, thank you. How's life treating you? I'm, I've had better days, but my day is slowly being a little bit better. No comments about my name. Please, I'm aware and I'm working on changing it. Not here to troll. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. Um, yeah. Your background is amazing. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. I got it on Fiverr. I, I've thought about getting other, like, backgrounds, but I, I don't know what I would get. <laughs> Because my initial plan was, like, I was going to have a room set up. I was going to have, like, a studio set up. I was going to have, like, like different backgrounds, I guess, for, like, different scenes. Um, but that never ended up happening. <laughs> Yuck, thank you so much for following. Uh, welcome to the Queerdom, a place where you can be a king, a queen, and everything in between. Teehee. We do a lot of things in here on this channel, including clownery. No, <laughs> uh, I mean, yes, but uh, we also play video games. I also have a podcast. Um, so, teehee. Oh, let's, okay, let's have some fun. Let's have fun here. Because there's like a, a little Twitter thing that's going ahead. I feel like this is kind of a played out Twitter moment, but whatever. I'm bored. So let's just do it, I guess. <laughs> let's just do it, okay? All right, let me do a quick little window capture. That works. <laughs> Y'all will see exactly what I mean when I pull this up, y'all. Y'all will know exactly what I mean. All right. This is the tweet, okay? Say a gaming opinion that will get you that will get you this reaction and it's a photo of Keanu Reeves and he's surrounded by people pointing guns at him. Actually, the person that I saw retweet this didn't say anything that spicy. They just said, I like Xbox Game Pass. And I was like, yeah, who doesn't? Like, like whatever. Um, but I, I just feel like sometimes it's an opportunity for people to say like, like, okay, yeah, that's a take. Like, I don't fucking know. Or for people to say something super obvious thinking that they're being super quirky or whatever. But I figured I would bring that to the stream because why not? So... What's your gaming opinion that would get you this reaction? I will go first. My gaming opinion that will get me this reaction, I think, I don't think it's a general thing, but I think in the queer community, I think a gaming opinion that will get me that reaction is me saying that Final Fantasy X is better than X-2. Because <laughs> I feel like I've gotten that reaction before when I've said it. Um... And the reason I say that is because, like, Final Fantasy X is iconic. Final Fantasy X 2 is iconic, but not in the same way. And the reason I say that is not because of the girls, it's not because of the gameplay, it's mainly because the story is... First of all, for you to, like, you have to do a lot of, like, going to the same places a lot. I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to, like, get 100%, you have to. But, um... 
I think my problem with Ten Two is that the game, the story just doesn't feel as like put together. The music isn't as good. It feels like there. It's like it. It is a. It, it is like a complete new soundtrack. So like it feels like the music is kind of like a bootleg of the original. Um. The gameplay is the best part of it. I, I, in my opinion, like I love the Garmin grids. I love the different dress spheres. I love the different outfits. For me, I have a problem with only having three characters. Like I do, like, like Final Fantasy games. I like them because I like to change around my team. So you kind of do that with changing out their, with changing up their outfits. Um, but it, it's just like not the not my fave and i think the story falls apart a little bit in 10 because i also think the game was a bit rushed i don't think they were expecting 10 to be as huge as it was so i think 10 2 was kind of rushed as far as like final fantasies go um so that's that's my take on that's my gaming opinion that will get me that reaction specifically from the queers i feel i feel like the the gays are kind of like that with 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 ten two, I think it's also like the romantic, like they romanticize that beginning of like, oh my god, it's so iconic. Which that first like intro is like iconic and everything, but I feel like the game does die out a little bit as you get like through like middle end of it. But people always romanticize that beginning part of it because it is so iconic. Um, but yeah, I think the game does fall apart a little bit. It becomes a bit repetitive at a lot of like at some points. Especially like after the first chapter and you're like, ooh, okay. Um, it's just inciting violence or like, like you said, people thinking they're just quirky or whatever. Mm. I think a lot of it is like an opportunity for them to say something so, like, like a controversial opinion. You're like, like, okay, good on you for having that opinion, I guess. You know what I mean? Like some people use that in order to be like, Almost to be like, I'm not like other girls, you know, like they do that, like, but with, you know, I'm not like other gays or I'm not like other insert identity here. And I'm like, okay, good on you. With that being said, I love Final Fantasy X too. Like, it's iconic, but I think X is better. Um... To be honest, here's the thing on Ten Two. They made it to try to appeal to girls, yeah, because you know girls can't be into JRPGs, so it feels off. Yeah, I, it was also weird because there's a little bit of fan service with it, so I think they were trying to appeal to be like, oh, this is the girl Final Fantasy game, and also like, but there's also fan service. But I think Riku is underage in it because I think Yuna is eighteen. Or like 19 because I let me actually look up their ages because I know that Titus and Yuna were 17 and 10 which is like why make them 17 like that's weird like these character designs make it so that you kind of you know I mean for me like I was definitely like attracted you know so but I think Riku is because I think Riku is younger than Yuna and Titus were in 10. So I'm pretty sure... Oh, I love that Payne just doesn't have a Wikipedia page. Oh, maybe I have to go to Final Fantasy Wiki or something. Final Fantasy Wiki. Wow, wow. It's either not controversial at all or like completely rotted. <laughs> my my one of my main complaints about Ten Two is like the soundtrack is not as good. I'm like, oh, this feels like a, a knockoff of like the first soundtrack, which is so good. That's my only thing. I'm like, oh, I wish that. This was like better. <laughs> I wish this was like a better soundtrack or like the same soundtrack. Like it's interesting to me that it's just not the same soundtrack. What is this sound? Hello. 
Okay, characters. Titus, Yuna. Yeah, let me just look up Yuna and Riku. Yuna is 17 in 10 and 19 in 10 too. Riku is 15 and 17. Oh, that that's weird looking back. I don't like that. They had a Riku's outfit is is way more like scandalous in 10 too. Even in 10, they had that whole scene of her coming out and like taking off her Oh no, she was 15. I'll get you there. Oh no. Oh. That's really rotted. I feel like a lot of us were like, oh, f fan service. But like. Because, like, the thing is, like, their ages are not in the game. Like, it's not like they tell you, like, hey, I'm 15. Like, you you, you, you only see this information in, like, a booklet. In the little booklet that comes with the game. And, like, her outfit is, like, she's basically, like, wearing a bikini. Which is, like, not a problem. But also, it just makes me think of, like, the old-ass man. Like, the, the straight old man making the, these games and being like oh let's uh let's have this scene where she's doing this and it's like she's 17 why is she doing this <laughs> i only knew that because i i watched a stream not that long ago where someone was like don't be weird, y'all. Riku is underage. And I was like, she's underage in 10 too? Because in 10, I remember, I I was actually, there was a stream of mine where I was like, I was like, oh my God, Titas is such a twink and whatever. And kind of like making like a thing of like, uh, oh, this twink. And like, not that I was like attracted to him, but I was like, you know, being a clown like I am. And then I was like, hold on, how old is he? And then I looked and he was like 17. And I was like so embarrassed on stream. I was like, oh, not this. I was like, why did they, like, why 17? Like, why just, because my thing was like, he's a professional, like, sportsman. So I was like, okay, he's like an adult. It's so rotted. Like, there's, I noticed there's so many games where, like, the characters are like, they have like these like abs and like they they're wearing these outfits and like all and whatever and like you're as the player or like whatever you're like ooh and then you're like oh like why set why 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 seventeen <laughs> like why do they have to be like this weird like not legal but also like like barely a teenager not legal yet like ooh, like why. Like, do they do that to relate to, like, teenagers? Like, you know, like, a teenager is playing the game and they're like, oh, he's not an adult yet. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. Because, yeah, I mean, as an adult, I play the game and I'm like, oh, my God, he's a brat. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, yes, he's a brat. Um, But, like... It's, it's such a weird thing. It happens in anime, too, where, like, you see a preview of an anime and you're like, oh, my God, they're so cute. And then you, you and then you read the description. And you're like, they're high schoolers. I was once a high schooler. I didn't look like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you look at these, like, characters from, like, these, like, sports animes, like, both, like, male, female characters and whatever. And you're like, why? Why? <laughs> Like, why are they, like, animating these characters, like, for shows that are clearly, like, fan service? And they're like, why? 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 Maybe it's, like, TV shows where the character... It's, like, TV shows where the characters are 17, played by 30-year-olds. Right. Yeah, now as an adult, it's weird that, too. I'm like... I don't know about, like, feeling, like, it's, like, a weird, like, we were watching the Winx show, right? And we were, like, we know that they're adults, but it's also weird because, like, they're not in the show. 
but it's also like they're doing you know what i mean you're like what is going on uh, you know what i mean it's just like this weird like thing where like you're looking at adults but they're telling you that they're not adults and you're like i'm not comfortable <laughs> i'm not comfortable It's like weirder because someone specifically designed them. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm getting to. I'm like, if you're making a character that's supposed to be like fan servicey, it's gonna be something that you want your audience to thirst over, then why do that weird in between of like do, making them like a 17 year old? Like, you know what I mean? To me, it's just like, why? What's also people's obsessions with like high schoolers too? Like I'm always like, why is this show set in high school? Like why does everyone have to be in high school always? Like why can't we have a show set in college? Or like, you know, in a work environment or like... Like I feel like Friends is like such a, not like, not in the themes or conversations that they have, but it's it's like one of those shows that I feel like we've kind of lost those kinds of shows where like it's not set in like a specific environment. It's just like people being people and like meeting up with each other and like going to a coffee shop or going to their apartment or you see a little bit of them at work and you see a little bit of their lives rather than it being centered around like high school or college or this very specific theme or this very specific workplace or you know what i mean oh my god hi hi shane how are you by the way y'all let me know your gaming opinions that will get you that reaction i would love to know if y'all have any like not necessarily like spicy opinions, but like an opinion that you know is like an unpopular opinion that you have and it's like, yeah, I know, I'm in the minority here. <laughs> I think TV just generally became centered around younger and younger people all the time. Like in a lot of older shows, the main characters are, yeah, right, exactly. I think maybe there's like some sort of like study where like they saw that like younger people were watching TV? Question mark? I don't know. Or like I guess like for them in order to make a show like be relatable to as many ages as possible they try to make it something that like you know a teenager can watch because they can like a middle schooler can watch because they even though they're not in high school they they kind of understand what high school like they understand the school they're in a school environment so they kind of get that maybe the older kid in the house is gonna get it because they're in high school or they're like just graduated or whatever and then maybe the parents are like well i went to high school i can i can kind of remember and you know i think that that's that's kind of how they think about that like they try to aim it at like a family and trying to get as many members of the family watching which is why glee was kind of uh, a, a, a huge success because they had music that was like it, especially the first season it was like the first season was like um it's interesting like you you watch season one of glee and there's a lot of the adult storylines like not adult as in like rated r but like the adults in the show, like the teachers, and all of them kind of have like a, more of a storyline. Because I think in it, with Glee, they didn't know like, and they didn't have rights to like a, like a lot of like super recent music. So they try to toe this line between like, we are kind of aiming for like adults and adults will understand the jokes, but also if a teenager or a kid watches, they will kind of relate to it because of the high school you know, storylines, but also everyone kind of likes these songs. You know what I mean? I, I think that's kind of why Glee was so successful because like it, it was, it was not like a family show in a traditional sense, but it was a family-ish show. <laughs> 
you're trying to think of a, an unpopular gaming opinion, but everyone already knows I like Final Fantasy 13. Mm, I like 13. A, uh, a gaming opinion of liking a game that somebody else may not like. Um, just a general like opinion that like, if you say it, you feel like everyone in the room is like, what? Or everyone's like, hmm. Like, I guess an opinion of yours that um, doesn't get received very well with other gamers, I guess. Ignoring the meme, nor it is unpopular, but my gaming observation is I hate how successful Resident Evil is, uh, mainly because there is barely any representation past a ton of white people. I could only think about four people of color and two of them died, and that's four non white side characters out of tens of main white characters that's valid that's super valid i mean you could say that for final fantasy 2 um oh shit <laughs> not me i'm just like my 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 chair is like i'm, I'm just like removing pieces of not pieces of it but like <laughs> hold on She's peeling, Your Honor, so I just keep, like, ripping little things from my seat. And I just dropped a little bit on the ground. Which, I could let it be there, but I'm not. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that, though. Like, Resident Evil, there's definitely not enough representation. Uh, there's definitely, Final Fantasy definitely could use a lot more representation. I don't necessarily hate that they're very successful because there's a lot of different franchises, there's a lot of different things and IPs and whatever that are not very inclusive and they're successful regardless. So I don't I don't necessarily despise it for being successful in spite of the lack of representation, but I think for me I would like for it to be more in, to like listen to that feedback and be like yeah, our games could use to be more inclusive moving forward. Um, it's hard to kind of think about that from the perspective of, I mean, specifically Resident Evil and Final Fantasy speaking, they're developed in Japan. And and so I, I'm, I'm thinking that unless there's more clear, rep, not representation, but um, unless there's more clear instructions, I guess, from the Western side of things, for them to be like, hey, the the Western audience does want to see, you know, diversity, you know, because I don't know how much of it is them developing thinking. Like I remember, like, um, like I remember Cloud was developed specifically to please a Western audience. Same with Titus, I think. Titus is like this blue-eyed blonde guy, tan, because they were like, oh, he's gonna be like, um. He's gonna be a hit with Western audiences. I'm pretty sure that was their, that was, cause I think originally he was a brunette. So I, I remember vaguely hearing about how they wanted to make him like a, a blondie, like a sportsy guy, uh, kind of tan so that he would be, um, he would be more like, appealing to like western audiences do you need a new chair what's happening well my chair isn't great uh i definitely want to get a new one but yeah she's definitely i keep like she's definitely peeling <laughs> she's like fine but uh yeah Final Fantasy is like that too, and a lot of people of color, um, that they're poorly written. The original Barrett, I think, I think that I even the new Barrett, I noticed like last time I streamed, there was a little bit of like Cloud constantly being like, telling him to be rational, telling him to be, to calm down, telling him to, you know what I mean? I, I noticed a lot, a lot of like the, the, the latest interactions with Barrett have been a lot of like, everyone else telling him he's being too much like him being too much him being the non-strategic one and you know like there's there's still some stuff in the in the new version where you're like okay can we can we not 
you would say one of the Call of Duties because it can be controversial between gamers. What do you mean? You like Call of Duty? Is that your... Is that what you mean, Shane? You you hate RE for more reasons than that, but it's definitely one of my your great your main gripes with the entire series as a whole. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, my my chair is a moment. Like it's she's peeling everywhere. Um, it's not a great chair. It's like a gamer. Like you can kind of see it. It's like a a gamer type of chair, which they're not good for you anyway. Um, yeah, my, my main goal for right now is like a new desk so that we can, we, I don't have to sit down in this chair for too much. You know, I can always like stand up and, um, and do that, which also like, I just, you can support me for as little as $1 or one euro in, in coffee. And um, it's a really good website. I post some stuff on there, like for free as well. Um, like I'm, I'm trying to do some text posts on there as well. Uh, and I think I'm gonna try to like write reviews every once in a while, like rather than like, you know, making it like all of my reviews being video reviews. I, I think I'm gonna make some of them like written reviews so that I have like kind of um, a little portfolio of like written reviews, I guess. Um, I don't know, no promises though, but I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. But yeah, um, I recently posted as well like a, a review of Avatar The Last Airbender. I went through kind of like all three seasons and kind of my favorite moments, my favorite characters. Uh, I, I kind of talked a little bit about everything in, in the show and it's like a, a less than an hour long, so you can get it for as little as one dollar or one euro. You can do a one-time support situation where you just like support me, you pay that one euro, you get access to the content and then for like 30 days and then you don't do it again and it's completely fine. Or you can do like a monthly thing. You can like subscribe for as much as you want. Uh, I have a pay what you want kind of uh, system over there on Ko-Fi. So no matter how much you're able to support me with, you will all get the same content. And um, it's like, uh, in a way, like no pressure for anyone who uh, can't support me on there. Um, but if you can't support me on there, that's completely fine. You can always just watch my streams for free. YouTube videos every once in a while are also free. My podcast is free. Um, so yeah. I wanna ask y'all a question, um, like a general question for the community that I kind of talked about a little bit privately in the last Patreon stream that I did before I moved away from Patreon. But I wanted to ask y'all, what are your thoughts on, like, Ko-Fi exclusive videos eventually being open for everybody after a certain amount of time. And what I mean by that is like, my question is, my, my thing is like, what I, where I come from with that is like, I would like for people who can't support me monetarily to eventually get access and to say that like, I have a pay what you want format and that part of the, you know, part of the charm is that you would get stuff like early and then you, people who can't subscribe for some reason would be able to get that content later. Um, versus, do you think that if, if you subscribe to the Ko-Fi, even as a one-time thing, or even if you do it monthly, would it feel like a slap in the face for you? And you can be totally honest, like how would it feel for you if I if I did that? Because I wouldn't want people to support on Ko-Fi to feel like, oh, this content is gonna be available for everyone. Like I know that there's value in having like exclusive content on Ko-Fi, uh, but a part of me is like a little bit like, I don't know, maybe it's a part of me feeling bad like as a content creator and like feeling that thing of like, oh, I think I want to have my content available for everyone at any point or like, you know, feeling kind of weird maybe about like charging for content. It's like maybe it comes from that. 
uh so you can totally be honest like if you're a supporter and uh or if you're not a supporter if, if you if you agree with that format or if you would be interested in that format because my thing is like i do put effort into those like reviews like my first one i it was more ranty but the second one i definitely put effort and work into like preparing it more and more and like a part of me is almost like i kind of like i would want for more people to like see that effort that i put into the things but at the same time if like people would feel betrayed or if people would feel like you know a certain kind of way about supporting me on ko-fi and then that content just becomes public like later then i don't know how you know <laughs> how they they would feel like oh i supported and then the content became available later and it would probably be like a month later so for example like in june i would release the content that uh, I posted in May or something like that or or like even or like earlier that so like for example maybe the crash landing on you review from April maybe or you know what I mean like it would have maybe like a couple months of a delay kind of thing before people could have like access to it I don't know okay so fly said I I wouldn't mind I support you to support you not to get special treatment that's valid that's valid. I remember feeling a little weird at first when I when I made stuff like even like I had a thing on Patreon where like a YouTube video would be available there first and I remember like saying like oh uh, if you want to see that um, you it's like paid content for a Patreon and someone and, and I remember like two people that were a part of the community at that time were like pay and I was like yeah, like I was like, it's gonna come out later at some point, but uh, you know what I mean? So I was like, <laughs> like I, I ever since then, I kind of feel weird, like, like charging for original content and me being like, yeah, I mean, I do put work into it and it's like, yeah, but at the same time, I'm like, is it unfair to keep that content like forever still? like behind a paywall, right? Spin says, yeah, same, you know, I'll support no matter what. Oh, Fly said, I would say do what feels right there. Do what feels right. And if someone has an issue, you probably don't want them supporting you. That's true. That's true. I don't want you to devalue your work, but I also totally get what you're saying about wanting more people to see it. Yeah, a part of me is like, well, I did put work into it. It would be nice if, like, you know, people uh, did see it. And, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I can come up with a system where, like, the content released in a month gets released that next month or something like that. And I can have some sort of thing where, like, it's like on hold on pay on Ko-Fi and then it eventually gets uploaded or um, I don't know. <laughs> I appreciate your feedback and, and honestly for people who aren't able to support or for people who don't want to or if people don't feel comfortable with Ko-Fi or um, what have you, right? Um, is that a thing that interests you? Like, the idea of, like, oh, like, my, I, f like, valuing that support as well and being like, well, I can't support you monetarily, but it, that would be, a, like, a nice reward. Or, like, do you, do you have that thing of, like, oh, I, I totally get it, like, people should or shouldn't have special content based on monetary support like i don't know <laughs> money is always a weird thing with streaming i'm always like oh i don't know i don't know what it's like the best the best approach to things and i'm like oh i don't know Yeah, and I and, and that's my thing too. Like, I wouldn't want to like devalue my work and be like, oh yeah, I shouldn't charge for my content. 
Um, but I do think that there's something like cute about like a true like pay what you want kind of format in which like if you can support and like cute um, and but if you can't then like you you can eventually get the content that's kind of where I'm where I'm kind of like leaning towards a little bit I'm like what if it was like I held it over there for like a month and then I just made it public afterwards because I also do think that it there's something to be said about I know I keep going back and forth I'm so sorry but there's also something about like someone who's like a new Ko-Fi subscriber for them to be like oh there's a lot of exclusive content on there right like oh there's a lot of posts on there um, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe I don't make it public on YouTube, but I make it public on Ko-Fi so that at, after some point people get access to it, but it's not like fully public on YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's something for me to figure out, huh? And see what's like best for me. <laughs> I do like to get your input on things though, because y'all are the ones like watching and supporting. So like, um, it makes perfect sense for for me to get your feedback on stuff. You're still directing people to the Ko-Fi? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that works though. I don't know if that would put things in like, I don't even know if I can do that. <laughs> of like editing an old post, but then people would have to scroll <gasps> to find it maybe, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll try to post on Ko-Fi weekly though. Like once a week, even if it's like a text post or something. And then of course, like a, a little end of the month, like video situation. Ooh, I do want to ask y'all, what do, what do you want to see for like this month's video? Do you have any like ideas of like things that you would want? Like maybe like, I don't know, like, because I, I haven't thought of a review for this month. I'm like, what do I, what would I review? So a part of me is like, what would I do? Like, what could be an interesting thing to, like, do? Even if it's not a review, right? Like, what would be something that y'all would be interested in seeing? Like, I don't know, like a QA. and a I, I feel like Q&As are weird because it's like, y'all can just ask me questions on stream, but maybe if it's, like, a random question or if it's, like, something that you don't know how to bring up on stream or something um that could be a thing or like i don't know like a day in the life or <laughs> it would be kind of it wouldn't be the best quality because my phone isn't the best camera doesn't have the best camera but i could i could try doing that or something i don't know what would you, what would y'all be interested in uh for may for may's ko-fi exclusive content I, I have thought about potentially like doing a Final Fantasy VII remake review, uh, but I don't know if I'm going to be done with the game by the end of the month, so that maybe will be a June thing. A review for the live action movies of cartoons we've watched recently. Ooh, like Avatar or Scooby-Doo. Hmm. I didn't really watch Scooby-Doo growing up though, so I can't really feel like I'm missing a part of a, of the review context by being like, you know, like, can I really say that it's a good live action if I'm not really super familiar with the original? Um, ooh, a circle recap. Oh. 
Re uh, Circle could be cute because I did watch two seasons, the two US seasons of The Circle. Ooh, that could be cute. That could be cute. A little like recap kind of gig. Go through the drama like episode by episode. Yeah, no, that could be cute. That could be cute. I feel like, unfortunately, maybe I could do, just do like the, the latest season. Maybe I think that would be easier. Um, you know, because there's a lot in season two. <laughs> but I guess I could talk about season one and how like season one is way more like chill with the drama and compare that with season two being more dramatic. I think that could be cute actually. It's a good idea. Let me write that down. <laughs> Let me write it down. The circle review? Question mark? <laughs> Maybe I could, um, I could like tweet about it and if like people had like questions based on like season two or something like that, questions about the circle that they want me to like answer. That could be cute. I like that, I like a, a, the circle. So I feel like I, I would have enough content for sure to talk about as well. <laughs> so. Tiki. <laughs> Opinions. Spin, I'm so excited for your um, for your VTuber debut today. How are you feeling about it? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Are you all of the above? Everything, yeah, I, I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> I definitely feel that. No, that's so exciting though, that's so exciting. I feel like I've seen so many friends go on that journey of like becoming a VTuber, so I'm just like, yes, that's exciting. I don't know if I would do it myself personally. Um, And it's like literally nothing against like that at all. Um, I just think for me, it's like, I'm just like so expressive on my own. Um, the, I think for me, it would enable me to not work on myself. And that sounds sad and that sounds whatever. But from a mental health perspective, I'm going to be fully honest. There are days where like, if I wasn't streaming, I probably wouldn't like do my hair. I wouldn't wear anything cute. I would like not brush my teeth. Like just being fully honest, right? So like, uh, so for me, I think streaming helps me kind of take care of myself more and make sure that I'm actually like, you know, that I look presentable, that I look decent and that I'm taking care of myself in like a way of like, I, I look decent on screen. Which is not like the best, cause sometimes I'm like, ooh, I haven't showered, but they can't tell. <laughs> um, or like, oh, my room is a mess, but they can tell. But um, other than that, um, you know, <laughs> it would, uh, it would definitely, um, it definitely like, I feel like that would enable me to not do cam streams, which would enable me to become a, a like a little goblin, <laughs> which would then I think make potentially make me spiral a little bit, like mentally, right? 
and be like, oh, I'm not taking care of myself because guess what? Nobody sees what I look like or whatever. I feel that, yeah. So that's why I try to like, like the only reason I didn't, I, my only thing for not doing a cam stream is like if I'm not feeling that well, but I'm good enough to stream. But even then, I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm like, maybe I should just, should just not stream. Today's stream has been so weird, y'all. <laughs> today's today's stream has been like all the all the rants, all all of the rants, all of the takes, all of the things of the things of the things. But it's been kind of nice to just like talk, you know? It's not like one of those like super planned streams or anything like that, but it's just like a cute little moment. I'm just like checking in, just saying hi. Cause I did say I was gonna stream today, so I felt I felt bad enough already that I didn't stream at the time I said I was gonna stream. And so it's just like, it, it was just like a spiral of things of like, that didn't go well and then I accidentally delete a stream and it's just like, no. <laughs> it's just like a whole thing. But yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap up stream y'all uh, cause I have no idea what to do and I, I feel like I'm just like rambling at this point. I don't know. I don't know if I want to get into a game or anything, so I think I'm just going to wrap up stream and eat some foods. Because I'm already streaming for almost three hours anyway, so I'm like, I, that's a pretty good amount. <laughs> that's a pretty good, like, like, that's a decent stream, you know, like, amount. Probably not the best way of wording that. Um, Miss Ruby Booty, probably not the best way of wording that, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but I'm super excited for you, Spin. Uh, we're watching Spin later, y'all. We're definitely supporting our friend Spin and his debut, VTuber debut. Um, so 100%, let's do that. But Spin is not live right now, so we can't raid him. Um, <laughs> so we are... We are, we, we, ooh, ooh. Oh, there's good, oh, there's so many good options. Oh, there's good options. Oh, there's good options. Oh no. Oh no. Who are we gonna raid? Um, oh shit. Am I just gonna say, maybe I'll just say, oh no. Making decisions in this economy. You're doing iconically. You're so supportive. I really, really appreciate that. I feel like every time I'm like questioning myself, you're always like, you're, you're doing great. And I'm like, I don't feel like I'm doing great. <laughs> like so often that happens to me where I'm like, oh, you know what? I don't think we get to raid this person super often. Um, okay, perfect. Perfect, let's say hi to Winnie. Yeah, Winnie is doing some coloring, which I think is a good vibe for like this chaotic stream that we're having today where we didn't really do anything. So I think Rating Winnie is a great idea. Winnie's pronouns are she and they. So please respect those. Uh, start raid. Okay, perfect. Oh my god. Ugh. It's going by so quickly. <laughs> that scared me. I thought the raid was going to start already. I was like, oh no. Um... <laughs> We're gonna go say hi to Winnie. Winnie is having a chill stream, so, you know, let's be a little chaotic by saying hi and the queerdom is here and all that fun stuff, but also let's, you know, match the vibes and be chill and have a good time on there and um, enjoy Winnie's company. I don't get to raid Winnie super often, so I'm very excited to say hi to them. Um, they're doing some coloring, doing iconically. 
Um, so have an amazing one. Have an amazing weekend, everybody. I mean that. Let's all have a wonderful weekend. And I will meet back with you on Monday for another stream, which will hopefully not be as chaotic as this one. Wait, I'm doing something on Sunday, but I don't know if it's going to be streamed or not. So you just stay tuned with my socials. Okay. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Have a good weekend. Love you. Mwah.